What is the importance of open source for EV charging station? Because open source also creates a label playing field for all players, uh, which benefit consumers. So it doesn't matter whether you drive Ford, Kia, Toyota, Tesla, you can leverage the EV charging network that is there. So please talk about the role that open source is playing in further democratizing and making EV charging more accessible to users. So what we see quite a bit is that this uh, landscape of standards you have to cover if you want to build a charging station is really ever growing. And it's also fragile, uh, so fractal that if you zoom in, you see even more details. And I think we recently estimated like 20, 30,000 PDF pages of documentation is already out there of standards. And it's getting more. And just to give you one weird example, there's some harmonization of error codes recently happened in North America. Sounds great, right? So we now have harmonized error codes. Fun fact, Korea did also harmonize error codes, but different ones. So, um, so now we have unharmonized. The, uh, the world again and uh, we think you can only manage this ever-growing complexity with uh, having a community approach and everyone puts the pieces together and together we can cover this mess and what we now see happening is that are getting in front of the curve so the, the ultimate goal is that for all the standardization streams you see globally and it's it's really truly really every, every industrial uh, sector here in the world um, that you have um, the current standard in place, everything is covered by the open source code base, and then new standards to be discussed are already implemented in open source before the standard is agreed on. And then uh, we call it, let's say, source code first, standard second. So you implemented that, trying it out, wipe out all the stupid ideas you only feel, see in practice, and then the standard is co-evolving and as soon everyone is happy with yeah, trying the code base, the standard is then published. That doesn't mean we don't need standard. It just means uh, we can accelerate and improve on standardization quite a bit. And we're getting there uh, swim lane by swim lane with, with Everest right now. Yeah, the, the standards are one of the interesting parts here in the sense that uh, we are going to need the standards for interoperability going forward as more things evolve over time and they are a point in time, um, and things do are evolving fast. The challenge also, though, is that a lot of the standards are behind paywalls, and which makes them accessible to um, companies, but not to open source developers who are working on the components that some of these companies may be using. So things like the Linux kernel and so forth, there's like, you know, a, a, someone working on the scheduler in the Linux kernel for some other company is not going to have the ability to get some of those standards. And so this is why keeping these verticals with people with the domain expertise, interacting with the uh, components and the upstreams and understanding which ones they're act interacting with is going to be key to um, being able to be explicit about how we can start to do the analysis properly for making sure that like, you know, when the Linux kernel, you know, has bug updates applied pretty much about once an hour at this point and figuring out, okay, you know, is one of that bug updates something that's actually going to affect my product or not, um, and how do I keep it safe? These are gonna be the challenges for us going forward. Um, and the standards, um, you know, we the standards are one part of it and there's various standards that are gonna to need to be applied. But um, prototyping and working on things out in the open in open source and then codifying it in standard does seem to be a way of improving the situation because people can always go look at the code. And I think I would even go one step further to recap what I discussed with you, Swap Niels, a year, two years ago, um, that we see that a standard is in a way kind of a language how, for example, in our domain, a car and a charging station communicate. The problem is their dialects. So that every implementation is following the standard in the same way because there's freedom to interpretation. And I think having a huge uh, accepted shared code base which sets a standard on how to interpret the standard can really help the community. And especially dealing with cars, uh, this is even worse because the car's update cycles are so slow and so long, they can't change. Even if they agree like, oh, we got it wrong, it take them at least a year to change. So it's a common practice that whatever is wrong, it has to be fixed on the car state 
to charging station site, that means uh, you have to then talk all the dialects out there. So you have to break sometimes standards in order to, for example, charge a Tesla or charge a Daimler or charge a Volkswagen or a General Motors car, because everyone has a slightly different interpretation and you have to be the bubble fish speaking all that dialects as the charging stations. And getting that right is hard and that needs a lot of testing, a lot of people, a lot of smart coders and uh, debuggers and yeah this is so important that it can't be done by one company at least not with the pace the industry now ga is gaining and the pace the industry needs to fight the ultimate of, uh, end um, challenger the climate change and uh, electrification and the transition here is yeah needs speed <laughs>